Today video idea started by a comment that I got from account called Bimarek two weeks ago. He listed a few tips how to improve the quality of coding that we get using Coding AI Assistant. And to be honest, without this kind of comment, I wouldn't made this video. It turned out following some of these tips and another few things that I found improve actually the quality of coding that I'm getting, speed up the process and consume the less talking when talking to a large language model. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna share with you five tips how to improve the quality of coding that we get from large language model using certain methods and technique. I'm gonna to try to give you a real example for each one and represent it with a Marvel hero so you can remember it. So let's get started. There is two different methods people use when they're coding using AI. The first one called autopilot. The autopilot example for this is like bold.new or autodev or using a genetic tool to create the project from the start to the end. The other one called the copilot. The copilot method is represented in Klein and Rock Line and Cursor and WinSurf. You're basically giving it a smaller task to do writing controller in the back end or UI in the front end and fixes and bugs in a smaller area with a heavily controlled prompt. This is the method that we go into follow and all the tips are for it. The first point, one feature at a time. I have seen a lot of developer, even me doing this mistake is asking AI too much in one prompt in just one task. And this is wrong. You shouldn't ask the AI to build your entire app in one go. You have to break it down in a smaller, manageable feature. Just like you basically code yourself. You don't build the entire project in one set. You build the back end, you build the front end, you connect it with the state management. This will help the AI large language model to stay focused and produce better high quality code. Plus, it's a very good practice for us also. There is four major key for this point. Be specific. When you're describing the feature, be specific and detailed as much as you can. And instead of create login form, try to say create a login form with an email and password field and a submit button and error handling for invalid credential. Key number two. Iterate and refine. Don't expect the AI to get it perfectly on its first try. Trust me, I have seen the best of the best of the model go in step in the right direction and somehow they go back two steps just in one prompt. Use the initial output that you get as a starting point and build on top of it for more improvement. Key number three. There is a lot of people avoid doing this, but I know it's important to do when you have time and especially when you're writing back end, test driven development, TDD. This approach will write the test before you ask the AI to write the code it itself. You can even use the AI to write the test using something called reverse JSON prompting is basically giving it a JSON output and tell it I want a code that will give me this output. This is will help you to clarify your requirement and make sure that AI output meet your what you want key number four break down the complex feature if you have a big feature that is kind of slightly complex break it down to a smaller smaller sub feature for example if you have implementation of user authentication you could break it down to creating user registration first then user login then create the password reset you don't do it in one go this Point is represented by Captain America. For the second point, it's slightly technical, but this is very important when you're coding also. Pure function are your friends. In a simple term, pure function are always give you the same output for the same input, and it doesn't mess with anything outside of itself. No side effect at all. The pure function are predictable, easier to test, and easier to maintain. They're like building blocks, like Lego, you can rely on. There is also few keys that will help you to build better your function. Explain the concept to the AI as detailed as possible and treat it 
as it's like a dumb person. You can even give it a brief explanation of what the Bure function do. Number two, identify the side effect. If the AI generate a function that has a side effect, point them out and ask it to refactor the entire logic for it. Number three, embrace immutability. Encourage the AI to use immutable data structure whenever it's possible. The immutable data structure cannot be changed after they are created, which help you to prevent side effect. This point is represented by the vision. Point number three, dependency injection. And instead of function hard coding, it's dependency like database connection, best use dependency in argument. Why it's good? It make your code more modular and easier to test. You can easily swap out dependency in a fly without changing the function itself. Point number four, don't trust your AI codes. You have to verify it. Don't just blindly apply to every code that you get. You have to read it and be careful and understand what it will make in your code. And this is like for technical high advanced software developer, because I have a lot of people here in my channel. I have seen their comments. They're not into coding or, or have an experience in coding, but they tend to use AI to generate code. The AI tool is not a replacement for your own judgment, to be clear. You are still the developer in a charge. And if you ask me why, if you don't understand what the AI is generating in terms of a piece of code, ask it to explain it, to understand the logic behind it. This is, can help you to learn and also identify the problems. And you have to also treat your AI code like if it was written by a junior developer. Do a code review, looking for potential bugs and wrong imports and style issues and where you can improve it. Refactoring. Don't be afraid of refactoring your, your AI code to make it more readable and maintainable or more efficient. I have seen this a lot when I switch from Haiku to the Sonnet. Haiku is tend to act like a very beginner developer in terms of the code. And it do a lot of mistakes. And this will lead me to another point later on in this video. When you're talking to large language model, I want you to understand it's not conscious and understand the entire picture of your software or your app that you're developing. It only understand the bar that you give it. So be very careful when you're accepting code because sometimes it will ruin your entire project. And to save this, I will break it to comments in GitHub. Each milestone that you create using your AI coding assistant and it's correct and it's valid, push it to GitHub, either branch or committed to the main branch, just separate it in GitHub. In case if anything wrong, went wrong after that, you can save yourself by getting the code from GitHub. This can be represented by Black Widow. Highly skilled and analytic. Point number five. If you are hitting the wall or started to get hallucination in your task, start afresh with a summary. When you're working on a really long conversation, which happened a lot to me, especially in this project, and the AI start to get slightly confused, take your last summarization from the last task that you worked on, copy it, and put it in the new task, new conversation that you are starting with. This will help you a lot, especially if you're using something like Klein or Rockline. They tend to give you at the end some sort of summary of what they did in the entire task. Why it's good? It's like giving an AI a fresh start and helping it to regain its focus. Sometimes the amount of token that we sent confuse the large language model and make it to do something wrong. There is also key points that I will give you for this point that is very important. The first one, monitor the entire chat. Pay attention to the AI response. If it started to generate the incorrect code or forget a previous instruction, it might be start to lose the plot. Second one, be productive. Don't wait until the AI completely lost. If you feel it's likely started to get confused, stop it and break the entire task and start with a fresh summary. 
Key number four, make the summary short and brief. Don't include unnecessarily details. For the point number five, we were represented by Dr. Strange. I will consider this point doesn't have a number because it's very obvious. It doesn't matter what task you're doing or what code you're creating. If the model that you're using is not good, the result of the code is really will not be that great. Especially if you're using something like the one of the open source model, it will tend to be hallucinate more and uh, act very odd. So the better the model, the better the code. I didn't believe that I have to say this, but trust me, I have used the Haiku model a lot to save tokens, but it's not that great when you give it a big task. You have to heavily guide it, like give it an example for each every thing to get the high quality code that you're looking for. Today video is experiment. I'm trying to test the water to see if people will like this kind of idea to give tips and tricks how to use coding AI assistant to basically get better high quality results. And um, I have more but not a lot to create a larger video. So what I'm going to do I'm going to ask you if you have any tips or advice, just write it down below in the comments. I'm going to collect it after a while if I have a lot like 10 or 8. And I promise you I'm going to give you the credit that you deserve in the coming video. For the coming video, I'm going to talk about the raw client 3.1 update. This a genetic assistant is getting better by the week. I will say days because it's just to have a new update right now. I have to restart the extension to have it. This update just deployed right now. It's completely new. I'm probably going to talk about it tomorrow if I have the time and show you what the updates also in the 3.0 did to this amazing coding assistant. So if you are interested in this kind of videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It will help my channel a lot and also push the video even more to other people to see. And finally, thank you for watching this video and see you in the coming one.